Welcome back. Today we have a brand new Jack Wolf knife and this is the Gunslinger. I'm super excited about this one. These will be hitting dealers on 6 16 23 at 11 a.m. Pacific time or 2 p.m. Eastern time. They come in uh, five different variations, all of them in carbon fiber. You have three fat carbons with the Arctic Storm, Purple Haze, and Dark Matter Gold, which I have right here. And you got them in two camo carbons in the Bazooka Pink or the Toxic Green. I'm kind of bummed that they, they haven't been using Micarta. That's my favorite of the bunch. But overall length on this is 7.3 inches. So a, a the biggest Jack Wolf knife to date. And uh, I think that's a perfect size range for most people's EDC. A 3.25 inch blade with a with a 4.2 inch grip area from here all the way to the back right here. So it should be able to fit your large, extra large hands very well. Let's take a close look at this. You have a beautiful clip point blade. You have that nice top swedge that goes all the way down that tip, giving you a very, very needle like point for doing piercing tasks. You have dual fullers on both sides or long pulls, but being this isn't a slip joint, we'll call those fullers. You have a perfect executed sharpening choil. Uh, the plunge line is way up here, so you can have tons of sharpening light before it starts to widen up in the back. I love seeing that. You have some pretty grippy jimping right here that if you choke back right here, it, it functions nice. Uh, but if you choke up, of course, you're going to overshoot that. Uh, not something I really worry about in the least. This thing has a full height hollow grind, so it comes down super, super thin behind the edge at nine thousandths at the thinnest portion. So this thing should be a slicing machine. That coupled with the CPM S90V steel at 61 HRC, this thing should be a performing beast. And that's what sets the Jack Wolf knives apart from the rest. Now let's see how well this thing performs. The knife came very, very sharp out of box and it also had a good bit of aggression to it. And that hollow grind, man oh man, is slicing like nobody's business. A few times I got hung up in the sharpening choil, but that was my fault. I made an adjustment and I mean, just look at this, blasting through it. Of course it sped up two times, but man oh man, it is slicing very, very, very well. Now we move on to the piece of birch to test the ergos and see how well that edge wants to bite, make fine curls and stuff like that. Obviously, it was very easy to make fine curls. I was more so trying to test the ergos. And for the most part, it was great up until I started like putting that kind of pressure into it. And you'll see me kind of making adjustments. Uh, there were two spots on the knife that kind of gave me a minor hot spot, uh, like right by the, the lock. Uh, where the carbon fiber like that crisp point to it I'll talk about it more in the review but uh, it made me change my grip some once I changed the grip my pinky was coming in contact with uh, the gun stock portion of the scales and it wasn't a severe hot spot or anything but I definitely noticed it's there uh, I'm still able to get a good bit of force into them we move to the half inch twisted sisal rope and this is where I'm talking about uh, having aggression. This is where I really notice it because if not, it's the, the edge wants to like skate off the sisal rope. But it was biting into it pretty quickly. The only thing I did notice with that, you know, clip point belly, <clears throat> sometimes it was uh, that tip of belly area was kind of getting buried into the cutting board the way I was cutting. And, I, you know, it's a pretty thin tip I didn't want to snap it off but luckily didn't have any issues like that and <clears throat> it was slicing very well that belly does help on the flat cutting surface at least for doing this type of cuts uh, not so much for using that tip but it did well I ended up making 50 cuts before I run out of rope definitely could have done more uh, but we do have more testing to do after this so I think it was a good spot anyway <clears throat> the s v I noticed it's, it's holding up you know, much better than M390 and uh, it's much more of aggressive, more of an aggressive edge. And that thin grind makes this type of work a breeze. Using that belly to drag through the material, it, it felt like I was cutting I don't know styrofoam or something not even like foam 
very, very uh, sleek going through there. And, you know, every material that I put up in front of it, look how fast it goes through the rubber. Sometimes, you know, knives can struggle with that, especially this one, but no, not at all. As soon as it started, I did three of them just to make sure it wasn't a fluke. And it blasts through that. Now with the corner card board, whenever I get down to the bottom, I gotta be careful not to bury that tip into to the cutting board, but did just fine. Now here, it, it does a great job with it. I think it has you know a little bit to do with that deeper belly up front and how much contact is making how much contact I'm making with the edge onto the board. That's why I'm having to do several cuts like this. It also doesn't have as much aggression, but you know, I still think it's pretty darn sharp and we'll test it after we're all done with this. All right, let's test the edge after all that cutting. Yeah. All right, let's close it up and take a look at the deployment and the action. This is a front flipper and you could also deploy it on the fuller, being that it's on both sides. You do have grippy jimping there. It is a little bit wider space, but it's grippy enough to do the reach around or the, the rolls very easy as well. Uh, let's see, can you do this one? Yeah, you can do this one. It's not as comfortable though because of that jimping, but that's where the detent ball catches. It's been nice to have a detent ball ramp to make it a little bit more smoother transition. Um, rockets out it is riding on bearings I'll pop up on the screen what the internals look like it's one of the smallest sets of bearings I've ever seen but I did notice on the site uh, he is offering skiff bearings if you wanted to purchase some of those I don't know it, it would probably make it a little bit smoother um, but as it sits it, it does fire out really hard it has a pretty crisp detent so it's got a good break whenever you flip it uh, before going further, I did I bought a new uh, a new light for the channel. Y'all let me know how the the picture quality is, if it's any better, any worse, or it looks just the same as always. <laughs> I appreciate y'all feedback down feedback down in the description. All right, we'll close it up and take a look at the handle scale scale area. This thing is stunning. You have the double ended bolsters, triple flute on this side, single flute on this side with that dark blasting finish on it. Titanium hardware, T10 for the pivot, T8 for the cover screws, and this is that gold dark matter fat carbon that is absolutely stunning. It's not really like, you know, not really my go-to material is carbon fiber, but I can appreciate this nice looking carbon fiber, even though it's probably not, my camera's probably not doing any justice. Um, Flip it over. He went with a full length titanium backspacer that's anodized the same color as your pocket clip. It's a titanium backspacer. And he went with that full length to kind of give it the appearance appearance as a slip joint if you were just to take a quick glance, glance at it, especially if you weren't using this pocket clip. Now, that's another exciting thing for me, somebody who normally carries their knives with a pocket clip. I love the fact that I actually have one now and it functions very well. But if you are more of a traditional type of guy and you want it to be in a pocket slip, they do come with a little plug. And he has a video on how to swap it out on the chat on his uh, site as well. But it looks really, really clean. <laughs> and he also on his site, which I picked up just a while ago, he has some, I think it's Northwoods uh, slips different three different colors that he's selling if you do decide to not use a pocket clip so that's awesome your scales are nicely contoured and one thing that i'll touch back up on that i talked about in the video whenever i was cutting the only time you know i noticed any kind of hot spot is whenever i was starting to use a lot more force and that's usually when you start seeing you know any any of the you know small hot spots but for me uh, I think I talked about it during the cutting whenever I first started doing the cutting this point right here from the uh, fat carbon that's just where my finger was sitting whenever I'm like you know choked like choked back a little bit like this but once it started to hurt my finger a little bit I was able to push my finger above it right here and grip the knife like that kind of choked up you know close to the blade but one thing I, I noticed as well whenever I choked up because of my medium sized hands is choked up like that. This finger right here is landing in this spot right there. 
and what that means is, is when you're pushing really hard, this point right there, which is not sharp, they did it, they knocked off the uh, the edges of that. But whenever your fingers pushing in it with my little fingers, uh, that pressure starts to hurt. But that was only whenever I, you know, started really bearing down. And I know most people aren't going to be using this for that anyway. Um, I think, you know, as an average EDC blade, I think it's perfectly fine. You probably won't ever notice any of those things I was talking about. All right, let's check it out in the pocket. Uh, it goes in and out nicely, and it sits fairly deep in there as well. Nicely done. It holds it pretty nicely also. Now it is tip for right hand tip up carry only, unfortunately. You know, I don't know, maybe late, if these if these are popular, maybe later down the road he'll tap it for uh, lefties as well. Now this is a titanium bolster lock, meaning that um, the bolster is actually the lock. You can see right here where they milled out material to put the covers over the top, which is which makes it nice to uh, for when you flip the knife. You don't have to worry about yourself pressing on that lock bar. At least I don't for sure because my finger is sitting on top of there. And it also acts as an over travel so you can't overextend that uh, titanium lock bar. Um, and I... I'm pretty sure from what I can see in there, there's also a little uh, nub on the stainless lock bar insert that acts as an over travel also. So you're double covered on that end. Now let's take a look at the lockup. Sitting at around, I'd say 50% or so, maybe 40%. Bank vault. No movement up or down, left or right. Very, very solid lockup. Now this is another little nitpick. Being that the scales are flush with each other, you do have a little bit of a uh, chamfer on both sides, but it's not the easiest for me to get my thumb in there. Now, I use the fat of my finger right there and just barely push it over enough to clear that detent, and I'm fine. Because this is a very light blade, so my, at least mine's not, you know, drop shut. Maybe, you know, after some break-in, more break-in, maybe it, it'll be a little bit more drop shutty, but not something I'm really caring about in this type of knife. Now, for some quick size comparisons, we have the Jack Wolf Benny's Clip and the Traditional Pocket Knives Ohio River Jack. It's a little bigger than both of these. Next up, we have the Pinyak Series Mula and the Spyderco Para 3. It's almost identical in length to the Mula. It's a little bit larger than the Para 3. Lastly, we have the Tactile Knife Co. Rockwall and the Pena X Series uh, Swayback. It's a little bigger than both of those. Let's grab a quick weight first in grams at 82.5 grams and 2.91 ounces. Outstanding. So nitpicks complaints, we kind of already discussed them. Uh, first, like I said, a uh, minor hotspot on this corner right there. It's hard to even show. It's not, you know, terrible or anything. And uh, with most people, you can make a quick adjustment. You probably would never notice that. Like I said, for me, that right there was, was kind of giving me a little trouble. And uh, this little point right there because of where my hand sits whenever I choke up. But other than that, this thing was outstanding. It performed excellent. It's beautiful, well-made. And yeah, I think they have a winner in their hands on this one. Love to hear y'all thoughts. Um... Let me know if you plan on picking one of these up. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. I hope everybody's having an absolute amazing day. I will see y'all on the next one. Peace.